Barbara, cake or death? Now wait, before you answer, some people have in fact chosen cake in the past. Eddie Izzard, stand-up comedian, performed his live act, Dress to Kill, on stage in San Francisco in 1999. And I find it to be an artifact ripe for examination. So I present to you Dress to Express, a rhetorical analysis of metaphors and gender in humor. Now, I've been a viewer and a user of comedy for pretty much my whole life. So I think I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So what I will be going through today in my speech is I will first give you an example of the theory I have been using for analysis, the benign violation theory. It's a, hum it's a humor based theory. And then I will move on to my first method of criticism, which is metaphor criticism. And then I will, I have two video clips and I will describe both of these video clips using the uh, metaphor criticism. Then I will move on to a second criticism, which is the feminist criticism. And I have one clip that I will analyze for you in this. And then I will have some closing remarks. The benign violation theory. It's based on humor and it was developed and tested by Caleb Warren and Peter McGraw based on the works of linguist Tom Veach, who was also a comedian. It's, based, it's made up of uh, three parts. Uh, either a situation is a violation, a situation is benign, and the perception of these must occur at the same time in order for a situation to be considered funny. For example, play fighting and tickling, we recognize that it is a violation of what we would normally expect, but it is also not taking things too far, so both humans and primates will laugh. It's, um, it can also be used as a measure to determine why something is or isn't funny. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be violated. The first critique, or the, first, the first criticism I will use is the metaphor criticism, which is written in Sonia K. Foss's book, uh, Rhetorical Criticism, An Explanation and Practice. And the first thing about metaphor criticism you have to know is what exactly is a metaphor. Metaphors are made of two parts. There is the tenor, which is the topic being explained by a metaphor, and then the vehicle, which is the parallel topic through which the, metaphor, uh, through which the tenor is explained. So in performing metaphor criticism, there are four steps. There is, you have to analyze the artifact, which I will do momentarily, then you have to isolate the metaphors from the artifact. Then you have to categorize them based on similar tenors or vehicle, and then develop a sort of view that these explain. First video clip. Oh wait, no, not yet. Eddie Izzard, Dress to Kill, was a stand-up comedy routine performed in San Francisco in 1999, and is the winner of two primetime Emmys for outstanding work in musical comedy or or musical or comedy routine. Uh, Eddie Izzard himself is a self-identified transvestite, which is a man who wears women's clothing. He, wear, he wears a dress and makeup during his performance. And his humor is based on small skits and impressions where he will take a situation and sort of act out something on stage. And uh, a little statistic about the audience in San Francisco. His Gallup poll shows that uh, San Francisco is the highest density in the world of the homosexual population, which relates a little to Eddie Izzard. So, first clip. So, um, but you can't do that in Church of England. You, you can't say, you must have tea and cake with a vicar or you die. You, you can't have extreme points of view. You know, the Spanish Inquisition wouldn't have worked in Church of England. Talk, will you talk? Will it hurt? Well, loosen it up a bit, will you? <laughs> Too, 
So, take or death? Definitely a very straightforward question. So, the tenor, this is a metaphor he uses, and the tenor for this metaphor is sort of a lack of extremism in the Church of England, and the vehicle is the Spanish Inquisition. So, trying to show what would happen if people started going extreme in a church where there is no extremism. The expectations are violated here in that we wouldn't expect to see something like that. Um, the, it, it, he presents, uh, in, in my paper I've categorized this under the religious commentary because Eddie Izzard makes a lot of religious commentary in his stand-up. And uh, he uh, presents kind of, through this metaphor he presents kind of a view of the Church of England and if, when you watch it, you kind of get the sense of the Church of England being dated, unnecessary, and ridiculous. Clip two. In Europe now, we've got a new thing. The European Union, 500 billion people, 200 languages. No one's got a clue what this language means. But it's the cutting edge of politics in a very extraordinarily boring way. Because 15 we've got 50 different countries in the European Union at the moment. And trying to get them to decide anything is a little bit. But oh, with, is it? Oh, no, with the background dispute. Oh, you're in it. Oh, I'm with, oh you're with it. I'm with it. 18 years we had a government in Britain who was a right wing government and their policy towards Europe was one of no, 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 I can't. Da, 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 now we've got a government whose policy is much more bonjour, hola, ta, ta, bang, 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 ta. Britain needs to be in the driving seat of Europe, in the driving seat or in the passenger seat, that's pretty good, you know, because then you can take a sleep for a bit. <coughs> Are we there yet? No. Uh, at the moment, Britain isn't even in the European car. We're outside the car, at the traffic lights, going, we're going to clean your windows, all right? <coughs> so yes, again, here we have the use of metaphor as humor. The, uh, tenor, be the tenor being uh, England's role in the European Union and the vehicle being quite literally a vehicle, the European car. Uh, the road trip of the nations in Europe. And uh, I assign this to the category of European culture because Eddie Izzard has a lot of commentary on the culture. He's, he's portraying England as kind of the homeless man of, the, of Europe, which, is, which was probably kind of fitting at the time. Um, it, the interesting thing I noted in this is he's, he does not present a solution. He just has an idea of where they should be in the future. The, uh, next, I will move on to my second form of criticism, which is the feminist criticism, which is also in Sonia K. Foss's book. Um, it's, it's not, as the name, the name implies, it has to do with gender, but it doesn't necessarily have to do with gender. It has more to do with sort of what is dominant and submissive in terms of what we expect to see in reality. Um, like if for gender example, is a woman presented as submissive to man, uh, it's involved, a, a two-step process involved in this criticism. It's the analysis of gender in the work and then uh, determine the implications. Like how are these reinforced in the particular work? I was going to be in the army when I was a kid, yes. And I say that, people go, oh, you, you, you. No, I wasn't. I was going to be in the army when I was a kid. Because if you transvest that, you're actually a male tomboy. That's what the sexuality is. Yeah, it's not, it's not drag queen. No, gay men have got that covered. And uh, this is male tomboy. And people do get them mixed up. They put transvest up there. No, no, no. A little bit of a crowbar for separation, thank you. <laughs> and gay men, I think, would agree. And uh, it's, it's male lesbian. That's really where it is, right? Because it's true, because most transvestites fancy girls, so fancy women, so that's where it is. So running, jumping, climbing trees, putting on makeup when you're up there, that's where it is. <laughs> and I used to keep all the... Yeah, so I didn't join the army, as you might have noticed. And, um, and uh, yeah, because there's not much makeup in the army, is there? 
<laughs> there you have that nice sun look, and that's a bit slapdash, isn't it? That's a bit <laughs> and they look a mess. And so you can't join. Even though the American Armed Forces have a distinct policy of don't ask, don't tell towards the alternative sexuality, if you're a bloke wearing a lot of makeup, you know, uh, I don't think they need to ask. Very <laughs> So you can't join. They go, no, no, you can't. It's wrong kind of lipstick. They are very unfair. <laughs> and they're missing a shoe job. So uh, early in the clip, he he states that he was going to be in the army, and he kind of displays the fact that when he says that, people normally give him a sarcastic response. So they're showing he's showing that he's not taken seriously. He he assumes the audience has sort of a preconceived notion about what exactly a man wearing makeup is, so he clarifies that role to the audience. He's not gay, he's a male tomboy or a male lesbian. He, he takes the assumptions the audience makes and fixes them. Uh, people assume the man dressed like a woman is gay when he is in fact not. He then goes on to demonstrate his inability to be taken seriously because uh, he, he violates their assumptions and uh, Therefore, men in makeup are shown as submissive in society to uh, men without makeup. So, on to some closing remarks. Did all, did, did, uh, I assume a couple of you laughed at some point, because then you were violated. I violated you. Benignly. Hopefully now, you will be able to recognize when you are violated. Benignly. Eddie Izzard is a the uh, person I think is ripe for analysis because he, uh, he he's a comedy figure as a lot of comedy figures are ripe for analysis they uh, they use their works to persuade and influence in sort of lighter method than the standard teacher and sometimes even without the audience's knowledge so maybe it's time to go back and look at some other comedians to see if we can learn from them like George Carlin, or Jeff Foxworthy, or Carrot Top. Maybe not Carrot Top. Thank you very much.